Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Tomasz and today we will talk about a head change. Before we start the video, we have great news for everybody that's watching. Our favorite shoe brand, International Dance Shoes, that we wear every day, offer to give our viewers a special discount code valid in the month of June 2021. To use the code, please go to the website internationaldanceshoes.com and apply the code at the checkout. Now, this is your discount code, but you can also find it in the description below. Head change is a very basic subject and pretty much in every dance, we do have to somehow change the head. Whether you are the leader or the follower, it doesn't really matter. Now, before we get to actual change of head, which means the turning of the head, we have to realize where the head is situated in our body in the neutral position when we just walk with correct posture. Like we covered already in the posture video, which you will have link in the description below, the head is the extension of your spine, is the last body block, and it has to be placed correctly so you can use the full range of motion with the rotation of the head in the most stress-free position. And that's especially for the followers. So, number one, we want to have our head exactly in between our shoulders and that's assuming we don't have any sway or poise, right? But when we are talking about just normal life, we shouldn't walk like that, right? So you can see clearly that the head is angled. Now, number two, the head should be also extension of your spine when we look sideways. So for example, I cannot have my head tilting forward. I also cannot have my head pulling backward, because in that moment, you won't be able to freely and fully rotate your head. And you will put a lot of strain on your muscles, which means for the same job, you will have to use much more energy. And also you have to remember that the muscles around your neck are not the strongest muscles in your body. So all they need is a very little strain and a little too much pressure or weight, and they could e easily go into spasm, and then you can have, of course, problem with your neck. The head is a very heavy body part, one of the heaviest ones in our body. So you have to realize that any misalignment in your head and neck will cause you a trouble, especially when we talk about dynamic dancing. Now, once we understood where the head should be, now we can talk about what head change is. Now, head change is physically, as simple as it goes, the rotation of your head around the axis that is your spine, right? So in the head change, we should not have any sway, we should not have any tilt, we should not have pretty much any other action, the rotation. Now, I understand that we will be in a poised position, whether you're a lady or a man, that we will have sway in dancing and that will change. The spine will be aligning to the actual curve we create in dancing and the head will still be just turning around the same axis. So we shouldn't change separately the axis that is our neck. So now, what are the limitations of the head change? And that's the same, of course, for the leader and follower. Generally, if I'm looking at 12 o'clock, both sides will be the same, and we want to turn our head maximum until 10 o'clock for me, and maximum until 2 o'clock for me. Now, that is in relation to our shoulders. So for example, if I now turn the shoulders, now that will be my 10 o'clock, and now that will be my two o'clock. So you have to realize that it's not in relation to where my feet are facing, it's in relation when my collarbone and my shoulders are facing, basically my ribcage and chest. Now, why cannot we turn the head more? It's because our body has a natural limitation where you can turn and rotate your head freely without engaging those side muscles on the uh, shoulders and neck. Now, some of you will have more mobility and some of you will have less. For me, it's very simple because my neck and body will tell me exactly where is two o'clock because that's pretty much the maximum I can turn naturally. So it's very easy for me. But it's very different for my partner, which can almost turn the head more and further than the shoulder line is, which means that she has to control a lot more where her head rotation is. And very important for the especially followers, you have to remember that any body part that we use, if we are working on the edge of the range of motion, 
it's very easy to get an injury. So it's much safer to get in the area that we still feel very relaxed and confident rather than try to work on the areas that you can clearly see that not only my neck straight away looks very tensed because I'm trying to turn my neck much more than I should, but also it will be very easy if I bump into some couple or something happens to get too much pressure or too much momentum into your head and something can get into spasm. So let's agree that we have to leave a little give to be able to completely have the neck relaxed and safe from any injuries. The next thing we will cover is how we should rotate that head. It's simple words. If you imagine that your chin is parallel to the floor, we should be able to turn it to my 10 o'clock position and then turn it to the two o'clock position. Now, the first thing you should start is just doing that. And you will notice that many of you will try to maybe tilt the head a little or maybe tilt the head the other way a little or maybe sway the head a little or maybe move the head a little more forward. So it's very important to almost imagine that we have this protective collar around the neck. And for those who ever had neck injury, you know how it feels. So if you have that collar, you know you can only turn your head one way and only turn your head the other way. No other actions are possible because the collar is blocking you. Now, the same thing has to happen without the collar. So you have to imagine that it's all the time there. And yes, your body will be creating different shapes. Therefore, your collar will be at different angle. But we won't be breaking the collar no matter what we do. Now, we have two basic ways to, or ba basic dynamics to move our head. We can do it in the smooth way, or we can do it in the sharp way. No matter which one you do, and they can be both done in swings or in tango, make sure that if it's smooth, it's smooth, which means it starts at 2 o'clock, finishes at 10 o'clock, and has the same tempo from A to B. It's very easy to go, right? No matter what the tempo of your head is and how it's time to the music, it doesn't matter now, but you have to do it smoothly from A to B, which means it's the same tempo from one side to the other, and of course you can do the same back. Now, when we talk about sharper action, for example in tango or quick step, now, we still go between 2 and 10 o'clock, but we want to get as fast as possible from one place to another. So instead of going smoothly through the middle, I will go from A to B and from B to A and stop. It's very common that when we try to stop, we actually add some small movement. And that has to be also practiced. And not when we do a full dance together with my partner, it's when I try to do it myself. So I can just stand in that promenade and I can turn the head to the right, I can head to the left. And when it stops, it stops. When it moves, it moves. But we want to see a very clear distinction between the sharp moment and then the stop. Of course, when we talk about timing your head to the music, you should, in theory, first know on which beat your head will start moving, on which beat will finish moving, how much time do I have to cover certain change the same with the sharp one. How much time do I have to get there? Is it on one? Is it on two? Is it on end? Whichever beat is that, you have to know that in theory and only then try to apply it in practice. Of course, there are different options, different variants and different interpretations. But in the end of the day, there will be only one or two correct ways to do any certain thing because your head should be always coordinated either with your rotation of your body or feet or your change of sway. And that's why usually we change the head in promenade or we change the head when we have too much sway. When we talk about the coordination of the head turn and the feet or body turn, you have to understand that as much the amount of turn might vary with your body parts, you do have to do it in the same time. So for example, if I turn my body and do it for one second, I have to give my head one second to turn. So they have to start in the same time and finish in the same time. That's the best way to make it look beautiful. It's very easy and it will look unnatural if we allow our head to turn in different moments in our body. So for example, I will first turn the body and then turn the head, or first turn the head, then turn the body. That will look very weird. It will look uncoordinated. 
and we just have to make sure that we know exactly what our head is timed with, not just with the music, but also with our body. So for example, I will sway between two and three, and in the same time, I will change my head between two and three. So it will be two, three, right? It won't be two, three, because that will look a little off already. Please remember that even though you can pick certain options of how much time you have or how long it will take, in certain figure you do have to agree on it with your partner, you will notice that the best couples in the world, they pretty much 95% of the time have the heads timed exactly together. Of course, there are moments, special moments that the lady will do it slowly and the gentleman will do it faster. We can play with it a little, but 95% of the time it will be exactly done in the same way, which means we should be very careful in the beginning to discuss it, agree on the correct timing, and only then try it together. Now, when we talk about sway and poise, please be careful that the alignment of your head matches the whole curvature of the spine we have in poise. So for example, if we have a poise and my body is angled in certain way, my head responds to the angle. So I don't want to suddenly drop my head more, or I don't want to angle it less than the whole body. Of course, it both goes both ways. If I sway to the right, I want to allow my head to also sway slightly to the right. And now, when I turn my head, it won't be par my chin won't be parallel to the floor anymore. It will be angled. And that is something you have to get used to because we don't walk like that on the street. So we have to get used to our head being in a different alignment than when we look every day. It's very easy to feel natural, but then, wait, sorry, but then look like that. So now you can see that my head is in completely different alignment than my body, which we should avoid at any cost to get a very nice picture. Now, the last thing I will say, especially for the followers, is try to avoid shrinking your back of the neck during the rotation and change of the place of the head. It's very common that that happens. I will now do it sideways just so you see better. That happens, right? Now, I do understand that you will have the curve away from your partner. But again, that's a body curve. It's not a head curve, and it's not just this place that it that changes. If you put your hand behind your neck and now curve your whole body, notice that whether your head is turned to the right or left, the hand should be still quite nicely fitting my neck. So I shouldn't be squeezing the hand with my neck just because I'm turning my head or because I have extension. I know it become fashionable to change in some places in the routine with the breaking of the neckline which might be fine in certain places, but it should not be treated as a general rule to place, uh, to turn your head everywhere like that. It might be fine in some positions and maybe some girls can do it better rather than the other, but you do have to check if you feel any neck pain when you do that, because when you do, it might not be worth the effort. Because every time you practice and then every time you do a competition, you will be putting more stress on your neck and that becomes very dangerous. So please remember it's a choice rather than a must. We still want to look beautiful, elegant, and dance in the most stress-free, not stressful, stress-free way we can on the floor in order to survive years, days, competitions, finals, everything. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. As always, if you liked it, please hit the like button. If you have any comments, please put them in the comment section below. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.